Today, I'm bringing you five Shaper Box MIDI tricks that every music producer should know. By the end of this video, you'll be able to use your MIDI keyboard or piano roll to trigger effects like this. So to start, we need to set up our MIDI routing. MIDI itself doesn't contain any sound. Instead, it's note data that tells instruments or plugins what, when, and how to play. No matter what door you use, you'll need two tracks. One containing shaper box and a second empty MIDI track that you'll use to send MIDI notes into shaper box. On our website, you'll find a whole bunch of MIDI setup guides for different doors. I'll link to that in the description. Here in Ableton Live, make sure that there are no devices on the MIDI track, otherwise the routing won't work. Now I'll route the MIDI tracks output into the shaper box track and make sure the correct shaper box instance is selected in this second menu. To check if MIDI is coming in, I'll open any shaper and switch the LFO mode to MIDI. Now when I play MIDI notes on this MIDI track, you can see this lamp light up. So now we're good to go. And note that this setup is the same for other effects that accept MIDI input, such as Kickstart, Snapback and Filter Shaper XL. Now we're all MIDI'd up, let's have some fun with Shaperbox's LFOs. Each of Shaperbox's shaper effects has at least one LFO wave. This is a drawable curve that can be any shape or pattern you like. A wave can be triggered in three different ways. By default, they play and loop in sync with your door's tempo. In audio mode, the LFO is reset by incoming audio transients. And in MIDI mode, every time a MIDI note is received, the LFO will play from the beginning. So you can select the MIDI track and play notes on your MIDI keyboard, or you can draw and sequence notes on this track to re-trigger the LFO. In this mode, any note will re-trigger the LFO, though I recommend sticking to note C, and I'll explain why later. So now you can get creative and use MIDI notes to trigger any shaper effect. A common use case is using MIDI notes to re-trigger your sidechain curve. Trigger transgate patterns. Noise rhythms. Filter sweeps. Drive accents. Or any combo of effects. For both audio and MIDI trigger modes, an LFO can be one shot or looping. Let me show you. Here I've got this sustained chord. And I'm using these MIDI notes to trigger this volume gate LFO. Currently, we're in one-shot mode, which is the default. In this mode, when a MIDI note is received, the LFO is triggered only once. Note that there is this end marker. This sets where the LFO waveform stops. If I drag this left and place it somewhere other than silence, you can hear that the LFO value remains at this end marker point until it's triggered again. Okay, now let's look at looping mode. Note that my LFO down here is set to dotted eighth notes. I'm also gonna change the MIDI trigger notes to make this example clearer. So you turn on looping by clicking this icon. And now the LFO loops continuously, resetting when a new MIDI note is received. And like I said, remember that these looping and one-shot modes work exactly the same for audio and MIDI trigger modes. Okay, next, by MIDI triggering LFOs, you can use Shaperbox as an extension of any synth. Check this out. Here I've got a synth on this MIDI track. The synth is being triggered by notes in this MIDI clip. Let's insert Shaperbox on the track. What I want to do now is use these same MIDI notes to trigger Shaperbox's LFOs. In most doors, you'll want to copy the MIDI clip to another MIDI track and set up the routing I showed earlier to send those notes into Shaperbox. But here in Ableton Live, we can do some clever routing. I'm going to group my synth into an instrument rack, then add a second chain. In this second chain, I'll add an external instrument device. And here I can send MIDI out to the Shaperbox instance on this same track. So I don't need to duplicate the MIDI. Okay, so the same notes playing the riff are now being routed into Shaperbox, which means I can use all the different shapers in MIDI trigger mode. And almost as if they were inside the synth, the LFOs will be re-triggered on each MIDI note. Starting with a filter, I've made this squelchy filter pluck by drawing this tight curve. Next, I'll add plucky trigger noise to brighten the transient. Now a bit of drive and crush. 
and now I'll add reverb that swells out after each note. So here's an AB between the plain old square wave I started with and with all the MIDI triggered shapers on. Next, with MIDI switching, you can jump between different waves on the fly, turning ShaperBox into a powerful performance effect. Down here is the wave palette. These are nine slots where you can store up to nine LFO waves as part of the current ShaperBox preset. Click in an empty slot and whatever curve is loaded in the main editor will be stored in this slot. Now change the wave in the main editor and store this in another slot. To overwrite a stored waveform, hover over it and click the store arrow, or remove it by clicking the cross. And repeat this process until you've set up your collection of waves. So here's a wave palette setup I made for some crazy breakbeat chopping. This example is from my ultimate guide to Time Shaper video. Once you've stored your waves in the wave palette, you can switch through them with automation. The parameter to automate is the name of the shaper, the current frequency band, low, mid or high, and the word wave. So for example, here I'm automating time, mid, wave. However, the more powerful way to program wave switching is by using, you guessed it, MIDI. Here I'm gonna to toggle the MIDI switch option. As you can see, each slot is now labeled with a MIDI note, C sharp to A. And now you know why I said to use MIDI note C for MIDI triggering. That's because when MIDI switches on, all notes except C are used for switching. Only use C notes for triggering, and you can use both MIDI switch and MIDI trigger at the same time. So let's make sure a MIDI track is rooted into ShaperBox like before. And playing or drawing MIDI notes C sharp to A will now load the corresponding wave. So here's a MIDI pattern that plays these time shaper stutters and repeats on the fly. You could also build a filter wobble machine. Or make trance gate switches. and even change sidechain curves throughout your song. Note that you can also store waves from different shapers in the wave palette. The colors of the notes indicate which shaper the wave will be loaded into, and you can even switch waves across different frequency bands. Next up, here's a shaper box MIDI trick I bet you haven't tried. As I showed earlier, this LFO length option sets how fast a shaper's LFO will loop. So you've got the usual beat synced options and hertz mode for unsynced speeds. But then you've got this pitch mode. When I select it, the trigger mode switches to MIDI. Now, when I play MIDI notes into ShaperBox, the LFO speed will be set to the frequency of the MIDI note I'm playing. Give it a go for bizarre ring mod style effects. For a broader range of tones, transpose the incoming MIDI by plus or minus three octaves. and try reducing smooth for more grit. And you can also use ShaperBox's oscilloscope in MIDI pitch mode to easily view the cycles of synth waveforms. Also, for more MIDI setup options and tips, click the cog icon to open the MIDI setup screen. Speaking of lesser known tricks, did you know that ShaperBox can take the rhythm from one track and use that to MIDI trigger a sound on another track in real time? Here I've got a drum loop. I'll load ShaperBox and load any shaper. Select audio mode and click this cog icon to open the audio trigger setup screen. You can see that ShaperBox detects the drum loop's incoming transients. And what's cool is that you can convert those detected audio transients into MIDI notes to trigger other sounds in your track. Here in this MIDI out menu, you can choose to output any MIDI note. I'm gonna leave this at C3. Then on another MIDI track, I've got this sample loaded into a sampler. Bop, bop, bop. 
On the inputs of this track, I'll select my drum channel and the Shaperbox instance, and now I'll arm the track. Now Shaperbox is outputting the drum loop's detected transients as MIDI note C3 to trigger my sample. And how about we do the same with another channel and trigger an 808 bass. From here I can play around with detection settings to add or remove triggers and play back more or less notes on the fly. And just a heads up, our snapback instant layering effect has the exact same MIDI out feature. Next, go and watch this video so you can take all the MIDI tricks you've learned in this video and apply them to kick drums. And don't forget to check out our plugins at cableguys.com.